So in our other videos about insurance, we've talked about tenant insurance, empty property insurance, insurance claims. And today I'm really keen to talk about landlord insurance. Now, landlords should always take out suitable um, insurance products. However, under the code of practice that came into force on the 31st of January 2018, it specifically states that landlords must ensure they have the appropriate insurance in place for their properties. So over to you, Alex, how is a landlord insurance policy different from sort of an ordinary home insurance policy? Um, well, specialist um, insurance product tailored specifically for landlords um, covers the risks associated with renting a property. Mm -hmm. um, so this really importantly provides cover for things like loss of rent, okay. um, property owner's liability and the landlord's contents. Um, <clears throat> normal, it's almost like a mini business policy. Yes, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. a normal home insurance might not provide the um, levels of cover required when, when renting out a property and may not pay claims if the insurer discovers that the property is actually being let. It's a different, it's a, a key material fact. So in a situation, so a landlord has rented up property, thought they had the right policy in place, there's a claim if the insurance company discovered that actually they had a personal home insurance policy in place and not a rental insurance policy in place, they could just basically say insurance. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's really, really yeah. important to make mm -hmm. sure that it's declared that the mm -hmm. what the, the building or the property is being used for. And I imagine actually it's probably also a condition of the mortgage that they have the That's relevant excellent. insurance in place for a buy to let yeah. mortgage or a position of the yeah. permission to let mortgage as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. goodness me. <laughs> um, we interesting. we had a, a major issue quite recently um, in a property where we'd, we'd recently taken on the management of the property and we discovered, two months into our management, we discovered a leak, it's a three-storey property. And um, this leak had been going undetected for seven years. Mm. It must have been seven years, whenever the bathroom was installed. It just happened to be at the top of the property. Yes, they were working it all the way down. And um, fortunately though, um, the landlord had um, trace and access or track and trace um, yes. policy, policy with their insurance. Can you tell us a bit more about this trace and access or whatever it's called and why it's so important? Yes, it's trace and access, as you right. say, is, is key mm -hmm. um, to have, especially as a, as a landlord, um, because it provides cover in respect of um, locating the source of the damage, mm -hmm. um, such as a leaking pipe behind um, tiles mm -hmm. or um, underneath floorboards, um, and that can be very costly, taking that to bits. You know, people now increasingly as well have quite valuable fixtures and fittings. Mm -hmm. And taking yep. those apart to trace and then putting it all back together again, that can be an expensive operation. So that's important yeah. to make sure that's covered as part of the... So it's lifting tracing. the floorboards, it's lifting the carpet, it's lifting the tiles. Yes, yeah, it's taking these off the wall, yep. rummaging mm -hmm. around, as they say. Um, and then obviously accessing it, you know, so it's the tracing up, mm -hmm. which might, as you say, through number of levels of, yeah. of mm -hmm. floors, um, and then accessing the actual um, the actual source of the, the leak. Mm -hmm. um, so not having that could could end up being very expensive um, for the landlord to, to yeah. cover themselves Absolutely. if they haven't got uh, that sort of uh, cover in place. And interesting, I mean, this particular property we had, um, it, it took us a while to find the leak, um, and yes, floorboards came up, all the dead and ash was removed, it was, yeah, it was messy, some ceilings had to come out to dry out and everything else, but the actual leak itself took £20 to fix. Yeah, it often does, yeah. it's often just a small part yeah. that's corroded or um, just dis disintegrated, which is not covered, that's just yeah. your... Your, your wear and tear, um, but as I say, it's that trace and access, making sure that's covered. And escape of water is is the number one insurance right, claim. Okay. Um, uh, because nowadays people have so many more bathrooms, um, right, of course, than yeah. they did back in the day, mm -hmm, if you like. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, and uh, obviously, you know, we all now have washing machines and dishwashers, yeah. which again, back in the day was, was done mm -hmm. a lot more manually. Yeah. So there's far more to sort of go wrong in terms of right, okay. escape of water. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so making sure that you've got robust trace and access and sort of escape of water cover is, is key for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's my understanding that, say, if you went, um, you know, well, a lot of insurance policies don't necessarily offer this straight away. Mm -hmm. you, you actually have to physically ask for this. Yeah, is that some, right? some do, I believe. I mean, mm -hmm. ours is automatically in, included. But right, uh, okay. yeah, again, it's the sort of thing that if you're doing a buying policy on your own, you wouldn't necessarily know to ask that mm -hmm. question. So yeah. Um, I think we'll come on to it in a bit, the sort yeah. of benefits of, of using a broker, and that's mm -hmm. the sort of thing that we would, we would highlight.
Perfect, great. So, so looking at that, looking at the trace and access and these different bits that you need to bolt onto your policies, what other things should a landlord be looking for in a really good insurance policy? So accidental damage, okay. um, mm -hmm. again, uh, that, again, that can often be something that if you're buying a new product yourself, you might have to tick a box. And if okay. you're wanting to save money, you might think I won't bother ticking that box. Right, okay. Um, but we would always recommend that accidental damage is so what you think would be accidental? So anything really that's right. purely an accident. Okay. Right? So you know whether that's you've moved from one room, side of the room to, to the other, or mm -hmm. you've, um, you know, something's fallen down, or, or something's just collapsed, or yeah. something that, um, spilled wine, spilled wine, <laughs> my uh, favorite. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a key, it's a key thing to have, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, you know, cost a huge amount of money to, to make sure mm -hmm. that, that box is ticked if you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. um, same applies for malicious damage and malicious damage and theft by tenants. Right. Okay. Um, some insurers again will charge extra for this. But okay. It's something that's automatically included with our own landlord um, insurance policy, and um, also to make sure that there's cover for a, lo a long unoccupancy period. We say at least well, up to sort of ninety days. Right, okay, because that's a really interesting point because obviously, I mean, this time of year we're filming this in, in December and, you know, if you had a property that was sitting empty between tenancies, even just because you can't move a tenant in on Christmas Day, yeah. usually we're pretty good, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I always say to a landlord, you know, do let us know. Now, in fact, our, our tenancy agreements state that if a tenant leaves a property for more than 15 days, say, I don't know, they're going on their standard yeah. annual holiday or something like that, that they have certain things they need to do and they need to let us know so we can go in and, and, and inspect it. But I do, and I know our landlords' um, policies can range from sure. sort of twenty days. But as you, so yours goes and stand up to ninety days. Up to, up to ninety days, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's it's you know key that you you you've got that because as you say for the reasons that you've given, mm. a turnover is not always particularly or can be held up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you're lucky and it's quick, yeah. quick mm -hmm. turnaround. Yeah. Other other times there are factors which which hold that up. So Absolutely. it's trying to make sure that there's. Uh, flexibility yeah um, mm -hmm. but uh, having said that it's always good to make sure that the, the property is obviously checked as well at yeah. least weekly absolutely we'll, 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 we've got another video about that boy yeah. avoid property inspections what should we be what should we do in those sit situations yeah um, and, and in terms of um, sort of a good policy and a good broker what, what other what, what are the other advantages of going through someone like Bruce Stevenson? Yeah, I mean, Bruce Stevenson specialises in, in property insurance, so it's mm -hmm. good to use, um, um, you know, we're local in Edinburgh, so a, okay. a reputable broker in the area, we're the, the leading insurance, uh, well, well, the number one independent insurance broker in, in Scotland, so mm -hmm. we like to sort of make people aware of that. Um, and again, um, it's our claim service, this, this I go back to our in-house claim service, again, helping the landlord through mm -hmm. What could be a very straightforward claim, or yeah. it could be an extremely complex claim, especially if there's a sort of a liability aspect involved, which means that the um, the, the burden and the hassle of trying to negotiate a claim directly with the insurer is taken away from the insured, so they can get on with running the, the business okay. of being a landlord. Yeah. And our claims department work hard on their behalf to make sure that the claim is best negotiated and settled okay. as quickly and as efficiently as it can be. And I guess they understand the jargon, the, you know, the technical mm -hmm. speak and the language that's, that's yeah. used, and they know what they're looking for, what evidence they need, presumably. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All of mm -hmm. that, making sure they've collated all the information needed from the, the landlord to present the claim mm -hmm. in the best of light. Um, and as you say, if insurers, for whatever reason, are maybe trying to shirk something, or um, maybe there's a bit of a grey area, mm -hmm. as there often are in policy wordings, to make sure there's real clarity and mm -hmm. work to make sure that they're working on behalf of the client to make sure yeah. they get the best possible outcome. So it's having somebody else on the landlord's side in yeah. the situation. No, it's interesting actually, we had a claim which, which you, you, um, you guys actually handled and initially the insurance company turned around and said, we're not going to touch that. It was right. to do with, there was a major yellow weather warning, loads of gravel disappeared from this driveway and it was 10 okay. tons, yeah. so it's quite a lot of gravel and the insurance company said, no, we're not going to cover it, but actually your claims handler, the handlers went back and said, this is, you know, yeah. and fought it um, on our client's behalf mm -hmm. and actually um, got the de initial decision overturned. Oh good, I'm um, delighted. Which yeah. was really good, but again, you know, you know, I think at that point our landlord would have just said, okay, they said no, Yes, you know, I'm going to have to that, deal with it and pay for it. Yeah, 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 so that was really good. good. But I think there was, a, we had another situation as well that, um, you know, I'm not seeing your benefits, but, you know, but actually we've had really good experience with yourselves um, in that we had another claim where... Um, one of your claims handlers was able to settle the claim themselves yes. in-house. So we have a, what's called a delegated authority scheme, right. which essentially means that we um, have the underwriting pen, both in terms okay. of writing the risk, which yep. can be handy if on a 
Friday afternoon, somebody yes. needs I'm insurance, now. <laughs> and we haven't got to refer to insurance, we've okay. actually got the ability to write the risk ourselves, mm -hmm. and that also gives us claims delegated authority, which allows us, and we have a number of, it allows us to write or settle a claim up to a certain amount, okay. once all the various criteria yeah. has been met. Brilliant, so it can just speed things, that's what speed things are. Yeah. I suppose that's testament to you guys doing your job well, the insurance companies Yes, I mean, we're obviously majorly audited, um, yeah. and yes, and... Uh, stress test and what have you to mm -hmm. make sure that we completely understand the policy wordings uh, that our, our claims um, team are of a reputable standard mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Um, so that's what, and we're one of the very few that I think have, a, have that ability to, okay. to do that within Scotland. Yeah, that's brilliant. Great, thanks Alex. Well, look, Alex, thank you so much for, for coming in today to, to talk about everything insurance. Um, obviously, you know, for more information um, in terms of the things that you provide, we can, we can um, certainly supply that to anybody who's interested and your contact details will be at the end of this video. But I just want to thank, thank you again so much for coming in. Thank you.